This chart shows the relative contribution of biomass based energy resource to various types of energy, electricity, heating, direct heating and transport. Okay. And this is the total energy content. Okay. So, this is fossil fuels and this is renewable fuels. Okay. So, in electricity, if you can see 2.4% of the total electricity generation in the world in 2018 came from bioenergy, which is significantly small, especially when you compare with other renewables like hydro, which is 15% and wind that is 4%. Okay. So, bioenergy's contribution to electricity generation is relatively modest. For heat generation, for say industrial heat generation, for example, okay, process heat generation, bioenergy's contribution is quite large, 7.7%. So, industrial process heat among all the renewables, the uh, contribution of bioenergy is the largest, okay, 7.7%. Total is 8.1% for the renewables, bioenergy itself is 7.7%. Okay. Among the total amount of heat that is being used for uh, industrial process heat. Okay. Now, if you look at direct heating, the contribution is even larger. So, this direct heating is maybe cooking purposes primarily or uh, other types of uh, like uh, heating of domestic areas, etc. So, in direct heat systems, the bioenergy contribution is 20% of the total direct heat needed in the world. Okay. And among the renewables, it is 42%. Okay. In transport, the bioenergy contribution is largest among the renewables, which is 3.1% out of 3.4 percent okay so you can see that in transportation sector in heating sector and direct heating sector bioenergy and biomass systems dominate among the renewable energy contribution only in the electricity sector their hydro solar and wind are all more important than biomass and bioenergy okay now, uh, this is important to understand uh, that even though biomass and bioenergy are less fancy each technology because electricity is fundamentally more economically productive. So, large solar power plants, large wind turbine plants are profitable to companies. So, they focus a lot on this type of systems in electricity generation sector. But you must understand that electricity is only a fraction of the total energy that is being used by the world today. Industrial process heat, domestic heating, energy for cooking and of course transportation, all of these are equally important sectors and there bioenergy plays a very important role and there is a need to transition from traditional biomass to modern biomass which is both energy efficient as well as uh, far more beneficial in terms of decreased pollution emissions. So, one of our targets will be not to convert traditional biomass into some sort of fossil fuel systems, but use the traditional biomass resource that is still dominating the total renewable energy systems uh, contribution and modernize it so that you get more energy efficiency out of it. And secondly, intelligently use the human and human activity generated waste residues and use it as a source of biomass. That way, we can sustain the growth and uh, growth and utilization of biomass in the next few decades. Now, we will discuss bioenergy and biofuels. Uh, the various types. So, these are primarily we will discuss uh, the growth rate primarily here. So, if you look at the uh, electricity generation from renewables globally, in 2000s, the electricity generation from renewables was around 163. This has increased to 637 for bioenergy. Okay. 
So you can see that there has been a fourfold increase in electricity generation from bioenergy sources in the last 18 years. And this is now the initial contribution of bioenergy was modest. Hydro was the largest in electricity generation followed by bioenergy then geothermal and solar and wind were extremely small parts. But if you see in the next growth rates, wind has increased from 31.3 terawatt hours to 1273 terawatt hours. So there we have we are seeing a huge increase. Okay. I would say this is a 40 times increase, right? 40 times increase in the electricity generation from wind sources that we are seeing. And solar, the growth rate has been off the charts. Only 1.33 terawatt hours was being generated in 2000. Now it is 566. So what? Uh, 450 times increase in the solar energy generation. So clearly, when you look at the growth rates, uh, solar and wind easily outpaces bioenergy in terms of electricity generation. But even today, bioenergy based electricity generation is significant enough and comparable to solar. Okay. And it has also grown at a reasonably good pace. All right. Direct heat from renewables is dominated by bioenergy and it is still dominated by bioenergy. The only other two sources are geothermal, which has grown modestly, and solar, which has also grown modestly. Okay. But bioenergy has remained relatively stable okay. because this is primarily coming from traditional biomass, which has remained relatively stable. Solar has increased, but the absolute growth rates have not been significant. This value is in exajoules. Heat production from renewables, again, in terms of exajoules, most of it is bioenergy and this source has also grown three times, though this is a small fraction of the total if you compare with the other cases. And when it comes to transportation sector, renewable energy use has two growth segments. First is biofuels based transportation and other is electric vehicle transportation. So in the next few decades, electric vehicle transportation is set to become more and more important. But biofuel based transportation growth has also been very impressive in the last 18 years. So it is grown from 0.42 to 3.75, which is again nearly 10 times increase in terms of exajoules. Okay. And this is renewable electricity, which has doubled during this time, but we hope that it will increase further. So here direct heating I have defined is heating for cooking, residential and agricultural purposes excluding industrial process heating. Most of the bioenergy is devoted to direct heating of this form around 38.6 exajoules in 2018 and dominated by traditional biomass usage in rural regions of Asia and Africa, firewood, cow dung, etc. Okay. Now if we look at biomass to electricity production and biomass to fuel production, what are the main sources of these two? So electricity generation is mostly being done by solid biofuels. So we were discussing wood pellets as a substitute for coal in coal power plants. So that is the primary source of electricity generation from biofuels, biomass. Next is biogas and municipal waste based systems. So these are basically producing uh, different types of gas, uh, gases, biogas, syngas, etc. And these are used for heating, uh, for electricity generation in gas power plants. Okay. So that is the two main contributors here. When you look at the biofuel production, bioethanol, a petroleum substitute dominates, followed by biodiesel, which as the name suggests is a diesel substitute. Other biofuels, include like bio jet fuels for example are the third section. The total biofuel production in 2018 is around 160 billion liters. Okay. 
which is quite a lot but as we noted this is just uh, what 3% 3 to 4% of the total inner, uh, fuel that is required okay so we need to grow this much more and this is the biofuel production by numbers from 2000 to 2018 so domestic supply of biomass most of it is solid biofuels followed by liquid biofuels and then municipal waste industrial waste and biogases the total domestic supply of biomass was around 55.6 exajoules and we have looked at this thing also before solid biofuels dominate everywhere followed by liquid biofuels in some places so next we will discuss some types of commercial biomass products the first thing that we will discuss is bioethanol which is c2h5oh so it is ethyl alcohol which contains two atoms of carbon six atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen it's an alcohol because it has an OH functional group at the end. Okay. This is used as a replacement of gasoline, partial re replacement. Full replacement is hard to do. There are uh, mandates for different governments to blend 10, 20 to 30 percent bioethanol to gasoline. So, uh, this is kind of a partial replacement of gasolines in cars and two wheelers. These are primarily produced in today's world from sugar cane or corn. Okay. So, you produce ethyl alcohol from sugar cane and corn sugar and then this ethyl alcohol is blended with petroleum and used for transportation of cars, two wheelers, etc. The next commercial biomass of importance is biodiesel. So, this is a diesel substitute, again a partial replacement of diesel. Again, blend percentage around 10%, 20% mandates. And you have, these are made of fatty acid methyl esters. Uh, we don't have to figure out what the formula is. Basically, it's a hydrocarbon with an ester, methyl ester group at the end. So, this is C double bond O, then a single bond O, then a methyl group CH3. And this is a generic hydrocarbon. Okay. So, C18 or C19 hydrocarbons are typically... Uh, uh, used in these cases. So, these are partial replacement of diesel in trucks, SUVs, etc. and are produced from vegetable oils. So, sunflower oil, the oil that you use for cooking medium can be used to produce biodiesel. So, while sugar cane juice, corn syrup which are have, uh, have a lot of sugars that is used for ethyl alcohol production and is used for bioethanol vegetable oils sunflower oil rapeseed oil etc groundnut oil these can be used for generating methyl esters that are used as diesel substitutes then you have bio jet fuels this is a very upcoming uh, area of production basically these are trying to replace aviation fuels by biofuel substitutes these basically come from this biodiesel which has been uh, which goes through a process that is called hydro treating which removes the oxygen in them. Okay. So, again, bio, this will have two molecules of oxygen, uh, two atoms of high oxygen per molecule of methyl esters. So, now you hydro treat it and remove all the oxygen to produce different non oxygenated hydrocarbons, and this uh, is used as a bio jet fuel as a replacement of fuel in aviation engines. So, these are all types of liquid fuels. A solid biomass fuel is a wood pellet. We are discussing this several times now. These are basically made of compressing sawdust and wood chips. So, residue from uh, wood industry okay, or for uh, agroforest industries, sawdust and wood chips under high pressure 600 bars. So, when you compress this sawdust or wood chips at high pressures, they tend to bind together and produce this cylindrical pellets which are 6 millimeters in diameter and 10 to 20 millimeter in length. Okay, so uh, 10 to 20 millimeter in length is 1 to 2 centimeters. So, something like this in length and small 6 millimeter diameter. So, small cylindrical objects. These are the pellets and they have a density of around like water. So, 1000 kg per meter cube. Okay, 
these are used in industrial furnaces for process heating and electricity generation so they can replace coal in these types of industrial furnaces okay. and this wood pellet based heat and electricity generation is extensively used in many european countries okay to generate heat and electricity then you have gaseous biofuel which is biogas which is obtained for from anaerobic digestion or fermentation of wet biomass so you remember uh, sewage waste municipal waste etc animal uh, animal farm waste these are industrial effluents these are all wet biomass with a lot of water content so these are actually put in a digester we will discuss this digesters later where bacteria basically Ferment, uh, anaerobically digest or ferment these wastes to produce biogas okay and this biogas contains 50 to 75 percent methane 25 to 45 percent co2 and some moisture okay so it's a mixture of primarily methane with carbon dioxide and moisture and this methane can be used as a natural gas substitute in power generation or heating applications so instead of fossil fuel based methane this is a biomass based methane that you are generating and this you can use in to substitute natural gas in power generation systems or heating systems. So these four are the major uh, four or five are the major types of commercial biomass that is being used in today's world. And to understand the economic uh, potential of a biomass system we have something called the net energy content or net energy ratio okay the same name ner net energy ratio it is the energy that is being obtained from biofuel by energy required to produce the biofuel so for example suppose you are uh, uh, generating and burning ethanol in a car okay so you are getting certain amount of energy by burning ethanol in a car so that energy obtained per kg of bioethanol is in the numerator now to produce that ethanol you need to uh, uh, grow sugarcane process this sugarcane and then uh, tra uh, uh, transform the sugarcane syrup into ethanol through fermentation processes so all of that requires energy as well so the energy required to produce one liter of ethanol is in the denominator and the energy obtained by burning one liter of ethanol is in the numerator and this ratio is the net energy ratio the net energy content so only if the net energy ratio is larger than one and as large as possible we would want then you are you are getting an economically feasible uh, bio biofuel because remember most of the energy that is present in bioethanol biodiesel biojet or wood pellets are basically energy created by photosynthetic activity of plants okay so this energy required to produce biofuel is the excess energy required for uh, growing the plants like uh, tilling the land uh, generating the uh, processing the sugarcane syrup uh, fermenting that sugarcane syrup and produce ethanol etc so that energy required to produce the biofuel is is should be less than the energy obtained from the biofuel then only it makes economic sense to invest in that system because energy costs a certain amount of money if you are not getting en enough energy out how can you generate a profitable system you are consuming more energy it's not sustainable right than producing it so it has to be a positive energy output and this ner depends on the biomass feedstock and the production technology okay so we will stop here in the next class, we will discuss various types of biomass in terms of their yields, NERs, etc. Okay. So, thank you for listening, and we will uh, continue this in the next class as well. Thank you.